All right, we all set? Where's my guys here? Seven. Hmm. Okay. I want to start the meeting. Go. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Please, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could I have a roll call, please? Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Livingood? Present. Councilor Micucci? Councilor McDonald? Excused. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Regis? Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight present? Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, April 9th, 2012. So moved. Second. Do I have any discussion? I will be abstaining, Madam Chair. Councilor Living Good will abstain. And Councilor Regis will also abstain. Can I have a show of hands all in favor? Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports. A, general government, Councillor Spinelli. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no minutes, but we have a general government subcommittee, lengthy one scheduled for Wednesday, April 25th, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. Thank you, Councillor. B, DPW, Councillor Vandal. Um, we had DPW subcommittee meeting was held on Wednesday, April 18, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, subcommittee members, Council Landrin, Council Nicola, citizen members, Mark Morin, and Maurice Capstrand. Also in attendance were Council Regis, Council Spinelli, Town Manager Clark, Tom Daly, and Karen Hanois. Council Clements arrived at 7.50 p.m. Chairman Vandal called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, review and vote to approve FY 2013 DPW department budget. Mr. Clark gave an overview of the budget. The overall budget increase is .83. Discussion was held on road material, roadway maintenance. More money was put into this budget to keep up with the older road system. Personnel staffing levels have been retained. Personnel with versatile skills have been added when it has been necessary to replace personnel. DPW vehicles, money was put into this budget to maintain an aging fleet. A motion was made by Council Langevin and seconded by Mark Warren with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013 DPW department budget at $1,625,497 which, which is an increase of uh, 0 0.83. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 5 to 0. Item, agenda item number 2. Review and vote to approve FY 2013 snow and ice budget. There was no increase in this budget item. This is level funded. Council Regis stated that this is part of Chapter 40 statute where a certain level must be funded. A motion was made by Council Landrin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013. Uh, snow and ice budget at 200,200, which is an increase of 0%. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, 5 to 0. Agenda item number three, review and vote to approve sewer enterprise fund. FY 2013 budget gave, Mr. Clark gave an overview of the budget. The overall budget increase is 1.14%. Mr. Clark said Viola contract is coming to an end this year. A motion was made by Council Landman and seconded by Mark Warren with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY213 uh, Sewer Enterprise Fund at $3,352,072, which is an increase of 1.14%. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, five to zero. Agenda item number four. <coughs> Review and vote to approve Water Enterprise Fund budget. Mr. Daly handed out six-year capital improvement program. See attached. 
which describe the line items shown in the budget for capital improvement. The overall budget increase is 0.48 percent. A uh, motion was made by Council Landman and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013 Water Enterprise Fund at $3,664,515, which is an increase of 0.48 percent. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, five to zero. Item, agenda item number five, discuss and vote to ratify the agreement between and among the town of Southbridge, town of Charlton, and Charlton Housing Authority to su supply potable water to property located in the town of Charlton pursuant to chapter 73 of the special acts of 1880 as amended. Mr. Clark discussed the memorandum of agreement. The Charlton Housing Authority has its own water system and needs no transit and needs to transition. Councilor Clements asked about indemnification, and Mr. Clark said liability, liability is not relative because this is a quasi state agency. The DEP has requested that we assist the town of Charlton. A motion was made by Council Langevin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to ratify the agreement between the, and among the Town of Southbridge. Town of Charlton and Charlton Housing Authority to supply, supply portable water to property located in the Town of Charlton pursuant to Chapter 73 of the Special Acts of <coughs> 1880 as amended. Vote by show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number six, discuss and vote to ratify the agreement with Weston and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $38,000 for the engineering design and permitting services ordered to clean the line, to clean and line the main from reservoir number five to gatehouse number three, and 1,900, uh, 1900 feet of cleaning and lining in this portion of Eastford Road. Mr. Dealey passed out a print out showing the reservoir number five clean and line project and gave an overview of the history of this line project. A motion was made by Council Landrin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to authorize the appropriation from the Water Retained Earnings Fund in the amount of $38,000 and to ratify the agreement with Weston and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $38,000 for engineering design and permitting services in order to clean and line the main from reservoir number five to gatehouse number three <coughs> and 1,900 feet of cleaning and lining in this portion of Eastwood Road. By f vote, by show of hand, all in favor, five to zero. Agenda item number seven. Vote to obtain authorization from town council to appropriate $65,000 for inflow and infiltration identification and to ratify the agreement with Weston and Sampson Engineers Incorporated in the amount of $45,000 and Viola Water in North America in the amount of 20,000 for their portion of the work. Mr. Daly discussed the investigations that have been done for inflow and infiltration identification. This is an effort to identify where our problem areas are. A motion was made by Council Langevin and seconded by Mark Morin with a favorable recommendation to Council to authorize the appropriation from the Water Retained Earnings Fund in the amount of $65,000 and to ratify the agreement with Weston and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $45,000. And with Viola Water North America in the amount of $20,000 for their portion of the work. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, five to zero. Agenda item number eight, discuss sunken grate at 388 Worcester Street. Mr. Daly said this work will be done this season. The work will be done by in-house personnel. Other great problems were discussed. A motion to adjourn was made by Council Langevin and seconded by Mr. Morin. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, five to zero. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Yes, Councillor. To this, on the subcommittee uh, report? <laughs> Certainly. Council Reed just stated that this is part of the Chapter 40 statute. It's Chapter 44, Section 31D, so it's Chapter 44, just to properly reference the statute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You make that adjustment for us. Thank you. 
Okay, moving on. Um, C, Education and Human Services, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A uh, meeting of the EHS subcommittee was held on Thursday, April 12th in the Rice Conference Room. Uh, in attendance were Councillor Mercucci, Councillor Nicola. Also in attendance were Councillor Vandal, Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnoy, Terry Wiggins, Jack Jovan, Mary Ellen Principe, <coughs> Margaret Morrissey, Jim Morin, Joan Menard, and Amelia Pelquin. The meeting was called at 7.02. The first agenda item was to review and approve the fiscal year 2013 school budget. <coughs> this was a very lengthy conversation and a, and a very nice presentation by Mr. Wiggins. Uh, Mr. Jovan uh, filled in for Mr. Ely a bit, um, who was away and could not make the meeting, but had provided us with a letter of information, which was very useful. Mr. Jovan talked about the priorities of the school department budget and what's going to be done with the buildings presently used when the new middle high school is completed. Mr. Wiggins made a presentation, which is available if anybody would like to see that. There is a, a hard copy on file, of course, um, and uh, went over all the needs of the school during that presentation. Mr. Jovan spoke about the leasing of buses and explained savings if they had their own vans for use in special education, field trips, and other activities. Mr. Clark said he had allocated $600,000 above the fiscal 2012 budget. As many of you know, the school was asking for $1.3 million. Uh, Mr. Clark suggested a joint working meeting between the school committee and the town council for discussion of the details for the use of the disposition of the buildings. And we are in the works of putting something like that together. It would be a, a working meeting, informational for the council and the school committee jointly to discuss some of the proposals um, moving forward with some of the empty buildings, not just disposition, but other uses too. I add a little bit on here in case um, you want some more information. Certainly the minutes are kept on file on disk for those who need them, the full co uh, copy. A motion was made by Councillor Marcucci and seconded by Councillor Nicola with a favorable, rec favorable recommendation to Council to approve the budget at $23,754,366, which is an increase of 2.59%. There was a vote by show of hands, 3-0. And I, again, I point out the school budget makes up 69% of our town uh, budget and we are, the town is 31%. Agenda item two, review and approve fiscal year 2013 budgets. Mr. Clark stated that note taking for the budgets would be done as previously noting, that doesn't seem to read right, but <laughs> we'll continue, noting any major discussions. Otherwise, just noting amount increase as in the past, no objections were noted. Hmm. Basically, yeah, that's a little strange. Um, Mr. We talked about the how we would go over the budgets at this meeting. We discussed it, you know, we went, uh, rather than line on line item, we went section by section, and if there were questions on certain line items, we certainly did discuss them and bring up um, any, any information that uh, people required. So I think that's what that particular sentence is referring to. The library motion was made by Councillor Nicola and seconded by Councillor Marcucci with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the budget at $485,812, which is an increase of 2.41%. That was a favorable vote, 3-0. Board of Health, there was a motion uh, made by Councillor Mercucci, seconded by Councillor Nicola with a favorable recommendation to Council for a budget of $720,861, an increase of 1.1%. That was also 3-0, uh, all in favor. The Veterans Community Center, Mr. Trombley had a previously planned vacation, and so Mr. Clark presented that budget for the Veterans Services, the Community Center, and the Rec Department. There was a motion made by Councilor Mercucci, seconded by Councilor Nicola, favorable recommendation to Council for a budget of $96,658, which is a 2.01 increase. That was voted by a show of hands. All were in favor, 3-0. Unclassified. There's another category in our budget. It's for veterans' benefits. A uh, motion was made by Councillor Mercucci, second by Councillor Nicola, with a favorable recommendation for a budget of $80,000, which was a 0% increase, and that was recommended favorably, 3-0. Also unclassified category was veterans' memorials. A motion was made by Councillor Mercucci, seconded by Councillor Nicola, with a favorable recommendation to Council for a budget of $2,700, and 0% increase. That was voted 3-0, all in favor. The Recreation Department, a motion was uh, made by Councillor Mercucci, seconded by Councillor Nicola, with a favorable recommendation for a budget of $18,404. This was a 3.72% increase, and there was a, a vote of 3-0, all were in favor. We moved on to agenda item number four, 
in which we discuss the transfer of the sum of $17,000 from Town Council Reserve Fund account number 1.132.578 to Veterans Benefit Account 1.945.5771.0.596. Mr. Clark said this transfer is to meet the commitments for the Veterans Benefit Account. A motion was made by Councillor Nicola, seconded by Councillor Mikuji. All in favor uh, for a transfer of $17,000 from the Town Council Reserve Fund, as noted previously. Um, all in favor. Agenda item number three. This was more exciting. No. <laughs> Budget's always good. But this was a really good thing that was coming up here, and we looked forward to discussing it. It was um, in regards to uh, Shot North America, Shot Fiber Optics Company, down on Charlton Street. A letter regarding public access to undeveloped property on their shot North American fiber optics at 122 Charlton Street. Um, we, I spoke in detail about the trails behind Charlton Street School, actually, and adjacent to the shot property. There has been an effort that's been made to add additional biking, single track uh, mountain biking trails on this property. And Shot Fiber Optic has been very um, cooperative and wanting to take part in being able to expand those trails. These trails are, have been proposed and been worked on by the trail committee, um, especially member Brian Wilson. He's done a lot of work back there. It's great walking and really great mountain biking. And SHOT is, um, again, cooperating very nicely. They would like a letter from us, um, which is asked, they're asking the town to serve and acknowledge that the town approves the intended use of the property for the Southbridge Trails Committee. And so they had brought forward a letter for us to, to do that with them. They would just like something on file that shows that we understand everybody's um, usage of that property. So a motion was made by Councillor Nicola, seconded by Councillor Micucci. It was uh, favorable to authorize the town manager to sign the Shot North America letter regarding public access to undeveloped property at 122 Charlton Street. Um, and so I assume we will take that up this evening. And that's just a really nice um, addition to our community, not more recreation area in our community. The meeting was adjourned at 8.35, and this was just respectfully submitted by Evelyn Rivera, recruiting clerk. Okay, we have a meeting I'm done, up. yes, meetings, thank you. A uh, little long on that. 5-7, um, May 1st, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room, there will be a meeting. Um, the agenda will be posted. As, as according to the rules. And then we are also looking at putting together another meeting, possibly the week, uh, two weeks from then. H don't have a date yet. It will be discu to discuss um, actually a presentation by our cable station manager, uh, Barry, who's been doing a really great job. Uh, he would like to go over um, how the station is running and what's going on and what the public can expect. Uh, there can be, there'll be an open time for discussion and people can come in and find out all the happenings at our cable access station along with anything else that comes up in the meantime. So that will be posted as soon as we plan the date. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor. D, Planning and Development, that would be Council Living Good. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a meeting scheduled for April 26th at 7 o'clock. Thank you. E, Protection of Persons and Property, Councilor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the Protection and Property uh, Person and Property Subcommittee was held on Tuesday, April 17, 2012, Rice Conference Room. In attendance was Chairman Langevin, Subcommittee Members, Council Regis, Council Livingood, Citizens uh, Member Monique Manor. Also in attendance were Council Clemens, Council Vandal, Council Spinelli, Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnois, Acting Fire Chief uh, DeFranzo, Police Chief Charette, and Gus Steves. Uh, the meeting was called to order at 7 o'clock. Agenda item number one, review and vote to approve FY 2013 fire budget. Mr. Clark gave an overview of the budget. The overall budget increase was 1.55%. Mark DeFranzo said the call department pay schedule is being changed. The past practice was based on rank and service. The stipends will now be a basic entry stipend plus an hourly rate for hours worked. A uh, motion was made by Council Living Good and second by Council Regis with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013 Fire Department budget at $2,076,767, which was an increase of 1.55%. Uh, vote show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Uh, agenda item number two, review and vote and approve FY 2013 
Police uh, Department budget. Mr. Clark gave a general overview of the budget. The overall budget increase was 1.71%. Discussion was held. We reviewed and spent time on talking about overtime, um, what was the needs, what was it used. So we got better, better knowledge of what was going on. Uh, the Quinn bill, um, just councils basically wanted to know. Again, uh, we, we know it's been faded out over the years. So again, we are just looking at uh, the numbers of the budget and making sure everything's where it should be. The need for three new hirees um, to get us up to our regular staffing levels and new patrol cars, which is in the budget every year, uh, which is two of them. A motion was made by Council Livingood, second by Council Regis with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the FY 2013 Police Department budget at $3,1290, which is an increase of 1.71%. By vote by show of hands, all in favor was four to nothing. Agenda item number three. Review and vote to approve FY 2013 as inspection uh, department budget. Mr. Clark gave an overview of the budget as Nick Tortoise was not available. The overall budget increase was 1.44%. A motion was made by Council of Living Goods, second by Council of Regis with a favorable recommendation to Council approve FY 2013 inspections department budget at $148,010, which is an increase of 1.44%. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Uh, the other, we had one, one item that, that was missing that we uh, needed to put on there, that was the streetlight uh, account budget was added to this agenda, it was left out by accident. It is level funded at 191000 Dollars. A motion was made by Council of Living Goods, second by Council of Regis, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve FY 2013 streetlight budget at 191000 which is an increase <coughs> of 0%. Show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. A motion to adjourn was made by Council of Regis, second by Council of Living Good. Show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. This meeting was adjourned at 8.30. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. I have no other meeting at this time scheduled, but uh, I will be probably pretty soon. Thank you, Madam Chair. I will let everyone know once I get those dates. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, moving along to agenda item number five is Chairwoman's announcements. We have an awful lot going on in this meeting. I'm going to, I'm going to pass on that this evening, and I'm going to move right on to town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I do have several, but I will go quickly. Uh, first and foremost, uh, just a reminder, folks, Southbridge Fest will be held on uh, June 2nd down at the Common. It is a day dedicated also to the 75th anniversary of United Way of Southbridge, Sturbridge, and Charlton. So congratulations to the uh, United Way folks that certainly do a lot for the community. The next one is the uh, Circle of Life Dif Disabilities Fair, uh, which is going to be held on May 4th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Mary E. Wells Junior High School. Uh, this is actually a, a function that's being put on by the Southbridge Commission on Disabilities. Uh, so I think it'd be a good opportunity for folks to uh, kind of understand some of the issues that are, uh, that are faced by uh, disabled folks. I do wish to also appreciate the, uh, the sponsorship. Uh, the flyer was made by the Tradeswin Clubhouse and as well as uh, Harrington Hospital has participated in that project for us. Just uh, on this past Saturday, uh, I know several folks uh, had an opportunity. There were 77 trees that were planted in the tornado affected areas uh, thanks to a $10,000 grant from DCR and the combined efforts of volunteers from Operation Tree Party, uh, the DCR staff, the DPW, and several local volunteers. I do wish to just uh, individually point out uh, one gentleman, Mike Murray, who I know approached me and, and uh, brought this effort. Uh, to its to one of one of the ones that helped to bring this to fruition, and it takes people that are interested that that work on things like this to to make a difference. So thank you, Mike, for your efforts.
And, and just one other in, in terms of um, the, the tornado area. I, I know I had announced at a meeting that we are going to do and we are planning on doing some street work up in that area to try to improve some of the drainage issues. Uh, we have been officially awarded $150,000 uh, from the state, but we have yet to see it. So only when we actually receive the money will we commence to do that work. Um, I just, just in case the state doesn't follow through. In terms of uh, just the last thing, an item of note on the uh, council minutes, I, I did have a, a, a very pleasant conversation with uh, Evelyn Rivera to do, she's a recording clerk. And Evelyn, I think, uh, was very apologetic and wanted to make sure that the council was satisfied with the minutes. So she did add additional material. Um, she did point out to me that sometimes these meetings go fairly quickly. So if the meeting is quick, the minutes aren't going to be that long. But uh, I would like just privately afterwards, if, if individual council members would like you know, what you'd like, we will continue to make this a, a work in progress. It is a little bit of a uh, stylistic difference and, and one that I think she is sensitive to. And that concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. Agenda item number seven is devoted to swearing in of people who, who are on different committees that we have appointed. And it is also a, a time of presentations. This evening we have three presentations. The first presentation is in celebration of a person who has put in 25 years of public service at Jacob Edwards Library, and her name is Karina Tiberi. We wanted to present this to her at our last meeting, but unfortunately she was not able to attend. I understand that Mrs. Tiberi is in the audience this evening. If you would please come to the podium. for 25 years of dedicated service to the Jacob Edwards Library. The library's outstanding customer and public service is due to the dedication and hard work ethic, humility, and loyalty of employees like yourself. It is with deep gratitude that we say thank you for your efforts, and we appreciate your continued outstanding work. It is with great pride that the town council and town manager acknowledges this significant accomplishment. Congratulations, Ms. Tiberi, and thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. The second presentation this evening are some life saving awards. And I'm going to turn this, this presentation over to our acting chief, Mark DeFranzo. Chief. Evening. Thank you for allowing me to uh, recognize um, three miracles that occurred last year. Uh, these people suffered a cardiac arrest event and are here tonight to say thank you not only to the firefighters, but the, to the town itself. First, I just want to give you a background on our uh, ambulance service. For many, many years, the uh, Southbridge Fire Department has been providing ambulance service at the basic level. Basic first aid, basic uh, CPR, those types of things. Uh, in 2002, we increased our level of service to the intermediate level of care, which brought us the ability to start IVs, to advanced airway management, um, and provide an additional level of care to the citizens. In 2006, we took on the daunting task of uh, moving to the paramedic level. In the summer of 2006, uh, the town council voted to pay for the training and the equipment to move our service to the paramedic level. It's clearly evident that the town council truly wants to provide the best level of service it can to the citizens of Southbridge. Um, back then, there were, three, there were 10 firefighters who went through the, state, through the training process, the state certification process. They started in the fall of 2006 and was certified in March of 2008. We were also tremendously supported by Arrington Hospital, 
who made their facility available to us to gain the necessary skills and additional training that we needed. The department started responding to the paramedic level calls on November 1st of 2008. With this level of service, we were able to provide many more pre-hospital services, such as sophisticated respiratory equipment to assist those with difficulty in breathing, pain medications to alleviate the patient's discomfort, cardiac monitoring equipment that allows our paramedics to interpret heart rhythms, and if the heart is experiencing a blockage, we can transport patients directly to a heart catheterization center, or if it's another type of rhythm, we can treat them with medications or electricity. The town, again, has certainly taken the stance on providing the best possible care it can for the community. This level of service is one of the many reasons that these people are with us here tonight. Um, some statistics show that nearly 383,000 out-of-hospital sudden cardiac arrests occur annually. Many victims appear healthy with no known heart disease or any other risk factors. Sudden cardiac arrest is not the same as a heart attack. Sudden cardiac arrest occurs when electrical impulses in the heart become rapid or chaotic, which causes the heart to suddenly stop beating. A heart attack occurs when the blood supply to part of the heart muscle is blocked, and a heart attack can cause cardiac arrest. Effective bystander CPR provided immediately after sudden cardiac arrest can double or triple a victim's chance of survival, but only 32% of cardiac arrest victims get CPR from a bystander. Sadly, less than 8% of people who suffer cardiac arrest outside the hospital survive. Last year, our department responded to 30 act, 13 cardiac arrest type calls. We were able to revive three completely. That equates to about a 23% survivability. That certainly is way above the average. So with that, and uh, with the recommendation of my EMS coordinator, I felt it was important to recognize truly these miracles. The first one occurred on March 22nd, 2011. The members of Group 2 responded to 14 Central Street for a male having a heart attack. On arrival, they found two off-duty EMTs on scene performing CPR. Our staff worked with these bystanders and placed the patient on oxygen and connected him to the cardiac monitor. They found the patient to be in V-fib arrest and were able to shock the patient. The first shock was not successful. CPR was continued and a shock, second shock was then delivered. After the second shock, the patient had a perfusing rhythm, sat upright, and started speaking to the crew. He was stabilized and given different medications to stabilize his heart. He was then transported to Harrington Hospital for further care. So thanks to the efforts of Group 2, Jose Rodriguez is with us today. Group 2, could you come forward? First, let me recognize Captain Jeffrey Matthew. Also on the call who was not able to make it tonight was uh, firefighter Roland Larochelle. Next is firefighter EMT paramedic Gary Peck. Next is firefighter EMT paramedic Kelly Manning. And I thought it would only be appropriate to recognize the two bystanders that helped out. So if I could have Doug Adler. And Chris Adler. I was nervous before I got up here, but I just want to make this quick. I, I didn't remember anything that night because my heart stopped. I got all the information from word of mouth after, after I survived. But I do, uh, the only thing I really want to say is uh, thank you very much I, to all the people that were involved. That's all I can say is thank you very much.
Thank you. Our second miracle occurred on July 13th, 2011. The members of Group 4 responded to Eastford Road in the area of Cohassie Country Club for a mail party collapsed on the side of the road. The patient was face down on the ground with no pulse. It appeared as though he'd been exercising. CPR was started, oxygen and the cardiac monitor were placed on the patient. The monitor showed a V-fib rhythm. A shock was delivered, converting the rhythm to a perfusing one. The patient began to breathe on his own during transport. He was stabilized and given different medications to stabilize his heart. He was transported to Harrington Hospital for further care. And thanks to their efforts, Robert Dumas is with us here tonight. <laughs> Group four. Now the members of Group four. Lieutenant Joe Hewlett. <laughs> Firefighter John Matthew couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> Firefighter Jonathan Peretti. <laughs> and Firefighter Paramedic Stephen Matthew. Ooh, this is a little nervous, nerve-wracking, but uh, I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it wasn't for these great guys. I mean, I exercise all the time, and it means nothing. Uh, my next step, I was out. I woke up a week later at the, at the hospital looking at my wife, asking her what, what, what happened, what went on, and, uh, and I realized what I had. And... Uh, you know, I can't thank the town enough for the funding that they did for this program. It's so important. Uh, it brought me back to life. I'm able to enjoy my wife, my kids, my grandchildren, my holidays, all of that because of these great guys. And I'll be forever in debt to them, and I'll thank them every day that I see them if I live to be a 1,000 years old. Again, I want to thank the town, and I want to thank you guys, John, Joe, Steve, and John, that's not here. And I'd also like to thank Officer Rick Reddick, that's not here, because he was the first one to place his hands on my chest and get things going. So again, thank you very much, everybody. And our last miracle, that occurred October 22nd, 2011. The members of Group 1 responded to the YMCA for male party who had collapsed. CPR was started and oxygen was given. The patient was placed on the cardiac monitor where a total of four shocks were administered to the patient. During this time, the patient was intubated and ventilations performed. After the fourth shock, the patient converted into a perfusing rhythm. He was stabilized and given different medications to stabilize his heart. During transport, a 12 lead EKG was performed where the patient was found to be having a heart attack. The decision was made to go to the cardiac catheterization center at UMass to better help this patient. During the transport, the patient began to wake up and make purposeful movements. On arrival at UMass, the patient underwent a cardiac catheterization procedure to open an artery of his heart. The patient remained at UMass until he was eventually discharged. Thanks to the efforts of group, four, uh, group one, I'm sorry, group one, Robert Dumas, I'm sorry, Mitra, 
I got his name wrong. I knew I'd get one wrong. Sagato Mitra is with us here tonight. The members of Group 1 working that night, Firefighter Intermediate, Jacques Kalanian. <laughs> Firefighter Intermediate, Bob Wareka. <laughs> Firefighter Paramedic, Scott Peck. <laughs> and Firefighter Paramedic, Rob Barton. Good evening. Um, without the help from these guys, I wouldn't be here today. So thanks to them and thanks to the town for maintaining such a fantastic uh, paramedic group. Um, I have to mention one person that's missing out here is Cindy Duff, who performed CPR on me right there when I collapsed. And without her help and help of these guys, I wouldn't be here. And thank you, everybody. So, um, we've singled out three of my four groups with the fire department. Um, that's not to say that group three or any of the other firefighters that weren't present or working don't do a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, all of the men and women of the Selfridge Fire Department certainly strive to be the best. And I think we can see that uh, our efforts are paying off. We have uh, three miracles walking here today in Southbridge. So, with that, if we can get all three groups and the survivors back up front, they want to take one last uh, image of all of you. And I have one last presentation for each of the survivors. So Come we get group one, here. three, and four. Come step up here, please. No. I've got, thank you. I'd like to thank you, Chief. Um, it's not often we're given an opportunity to see what our hard work up here does, and I want to thank you and your men for your very, very heroic work. Thanks again. going to move on to the next presentation. This one is for a, an existing business in our community, Dick's Hardware. As Dick Gomo would like to come forward. We would greatly appreciate that. Hi, Mr. Gomo. Hi, I'm Dick Gomo from Dick's Hardware. We're located at 43 Foster Street in Southbridge. Uh, we're a local business and we have been established for 15 years. Uh, we offer a wide variety of merchandise including plumbing, electrical, lawn and garden, wood pellets, uh, propane refills, paint, 
and sundries, and of course all your usual hardware items. Our business hours are from 8 in the morning till 5.30, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays 8 till 5. We also offer the town recycling bags. Uh, we are part of the uh, Make Salbridge Home uh, program, and uh, that's about it. Thank you. Councilor Clements. Thank you. Mr. Grimma, you've been in the community a long time. Yes. How long have you been in business here overall because you were, you were okay. in other Okay, uh, I've been, been in the hardware business for 35 years altogether. The last 15 for myself and my associate, Dale McDonald, has been in the hardware 15 years. Super. Ooh. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> Mr. Gomo, do you carry the large bins for recycling? I, not the town, but I, large bins. I do not stock the uh, large bins, but I have access to them. Very important. Yes. I can't find them. So yes. you have access to them. Yes, I do have right, access. Thank you. And we do have all the approved uh, trash cans for the town of Southbridge with the tight-fitting lids. And we also carry the clear uh, trash bags that the town sometimes requires. So if people need to comply with our bylaws, they can take a ride over to your place and they would be find what to. they need. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Thank you for coming. Thank Is you. Council, um, yes. Town Manager Clark. Manager Clark. I, I do wish to uh, express my appreciation that we have gone around and talked to several businesses in the Make Southbridge Home campaign, which I think is really an opportunity for the business community to, to step up and help. And, and I appreciate your efforts to do that as well as it's not always an easy job on this side. So the fact that you've been willing to help us with the, uh, the trash campaign too is something that is, is greatly appreciated by, by folks on this side of the, uh, this side of the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gomo. Does okay. anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Okay, moving on to agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. Do I have any citizens who wish to come forward this evening? Please state your name and address. Hello. Hello. Dan Butler, 35 Brookside Road. Um, I guess I'll continue the thank yous for tonight. Um, Saturday, um, it's been a long process. Um, we, we, we talked about Mike Murray earlier. Um, huge thank you to him for the Operation Tree Party. Uh, we, I think it was maybe August of last year or so. We we're still trying to clean up and all. We went to a, I guess it was a party jamboree, some, some sort of thing in Sturbridge. And we first met Mike at a little booth saying he was going to get trees for everybody and we thought, nah, no big deal, everybody's going to do this, that and everything, but he's kept contact with us over the months telling me, this is going to happen, Mr. Butler, it's going to happen, and then we heard about the tree grant, still promised me this was going to happen, but we were, weren't holding our breath, had, had confidence in him though, um, and then uh, they, um, I know uh, Peter Durant had showed up one day with Mike, they had little pamphlets with the different trees we could pick out. Got a little more excited then, and then Saturday, um, they showed up, big convoy of trucks loaded with trees. I mean, maybe not to anybody else, but to us it was exciting. Um, it's been something we've been really, really wanting, needing. Um, I also want to thank Ms. Clements. You sh she made me look like a weakling Saturday. Me and her were grabbing big trees, ripping them off the trailers. I saw her digging holes, using her own vehicle, hauling stuff, so thank you very much. Ms. Nicole, I saw you too. Um, it, it means a lot. Uh, Jason Cantero Landscaping, I heard uh, they, I don't know, I don't know the, the whole details, but I know they showed up with the tractor, which was huge help on the backs. Uh, we planted trees all the way down 169, down Brookside, um, Worcester Street, Charlton Street. I mean, it's a couple of years, it's going to look gorgeous. Um, Peter Durant, too. I mean, he showed up in my, my, my yard, uh, I think it was 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. He was digging holes, too getting all dirty. Um, um, I mean, the trees look great. Uh, the Bigelow Nursery, I believe it is, in North Row. Um, they're just gorgeous trees. But anyways, I just want to thank everyone um, for that. It means a lot. I also want to thank someone who, uh, it's been a while, but she also, um, um, Stephanie DiMartino, a couple months back. I mean, she's a private citizen too, just like Mike, and she did a lot. Um, she was doing, um, 
t-shirts, uh, going to a lot of events and raising money, um, getting gift cards for, for food and stuff for us all. She, she's modest. She's not gonna, she's not gonna say, you know, but uh, we, we do appreciate everyone who has helped us out. Um, I also had, I had two, two points tonight. I know, um, Mr. Clark, you, you spoke just a little while ago about the, the, uh, the, the money that was allotted, I guess, to fix up our road for the drainage. I was gonna point that out tonight, so I, I do appreciate, you know, that you guys are still looking into that. Um, unfortunately, the rain last night, I know my neighbor across the street spent about $3,000 uh, filling in this yard, which used to be all trees, and, now, and then it was holes. Uh, had a bunch of dirt brought in. They've leveled it all last week. Um, I've been planting grass for weeks, watering, doing everything we could, and then the rains came last night. They hadn't swept our street yet still, and all the sand is all over our yard and killing our grass. And, you know, just, just, just rem reminding you guys that um, drainage is a big issue. Um, even if what I noticed, I mean, like I said last, probably it was a December I was here. I mean, the, even temporary berms down the side is, would be a big help just to get the water all the way down the river where it's trying to get to instead of across my yard and <laughs> everybody else's yard. Um, and then maybe just a, a manhole, something to get the water down there. But um, I do appreciate it. Um, one more thing, I just, ha I just had a question. I hope I'm not out of time. Um, this spring has been really, really mild and dry. Obviously, we all know that. Um, our burn season's been pretty much gone away with. We haven't been able to burn a lot that we should have been able to. You know, we, I mean, we got rid of a lot of the, the trees, the big stuff, but we've all got um, piles of smaller sticks, like the you know, three-inch ones we did back in, when was that? Last August, July, something, when we, were, we had the big trucks coming, picking up. Back then, we were still busy with a lot of stuff, so a lot of it didn't get, get taken care of. Now we can't burn, so I'm just asking, as, what, what, what can be done? I mean, uh, can we, uh, if we get more rain, can we extend the burn season, or can we maybe have another day where we could you know, get the truck with the, you know, everybody drag their, at least the brush to the road and, and take it, because it is it is a little bit of a fire hazard, and um, that's all I got. <laughs> I think just if you can cut them up into small sections, we have that uh, area at the DPW open, so you're always welcome to, to bring branches down yeah. there. If these are bigger, yeah, it's, uh, it's, bigger things, I'll have to see it with the DPW director okay. to see if there's another. I know for for an instance. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I and then in terms of the burning issue, I know, um, it, you know, obviously the weather. We had oh, yeah. a, a forest fire in a neighboring town. Uh, we did send a, uh, a letter off to the uh, to the state uh, to ask them to to try to come in and. and help out in terms of some of the, the larger tree issues okay. and certainly the burning issue. Mm -hmm. But I think on the burning season, we'll have to just see how the weather yeah. pattern goes and what, if the fire chief thinks it's safe, then obviously he will he will address that as it comes up. Um, but we will monitor that to see if that's an option. But in terms of the short-term option, uh, certainly bringing some of the materials at DPW is always open to town residents only. Okay. Um, and we will look at the uh, the larger issues that are still in that area. Okay. Now, if, if my understanding is even if the DPW is closed, are we able to... That facility is open all the time. It, you can leave it in front of the gate or... or? No, no, no. We walk it in and put it in, the, put it in the trailer. Okay. The reason why I say town residents only is we do have cameras up because we have okay. caught some landscapers from you know, surrounding towns coming in and taking okay. advantage of our goodwill. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. I just want to say thanks again. Um, just don't forget us because I know you guys are all working hard. And thanks again for your help. Uh, you're welcome. I just wanted to mention what Mr. Clark is referring to at the DPW are very large roll-off containers. These are huge um, debris oh. bins, like, like giant trash trucks like you see the 18-wheelers. <laughs> it's okay. that type of a deal. There are two of them with big open gates so see, you can bring that. in whatever okay. you need to bring in. <coughs> yeah. okay. I mean, it, they have to be within a certain size. Obviously, they don't want people bringing in uh, you know, mm -hmm. massive trees. It needs to be cut up in some way. Or, okay. But it's, it's available for drop-off, okay. not in front of the gate, okay. in, the, in the bin. Okay. Well, I do appreciate okay. that. So, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's good to work with you. Chief, did you want to comment on the burn season extension? Yeah, burning season uh, is regulated by the state. Uh, we really have no control over that. The state is going to end burning May 1st. Um, they have historically in the past never extended burning. I don't see them doing it again this year. Um, a lot of things that occur also have to do with DEP and air quality. So what we have to look at when we get phone calls on people on the days that they want to burn, we have to look at the DEP website to make sure the air quality is appropriate. And then we check with uh, DCR and the Department of Forest Fire Services to make sure that burning is going to be okay for the day. And I'm sure you've been hearing the words on the weather as far as red flags. As soon as we get a red flag warning, we don't issue any burning permits here in the community. 
So, and it, so far, our citizens have been great. We haven't had any issues or problems. We hope that continues, but I really don't see any uh, extension being put on past May 1st. Thank you very much. Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Good evening, Mike Murray, 26 on Lane. I was only part of the process that, that brought the trees to town. Um, Operation Tree Party was, was born in the aftermath of a Sturbridge Tea Party meeting where Jane Woodworth, Paul Roy, Kim Miller, and I decided to band together to start up Operation Tree Party, replanting our roots. Um, it wasn't an easy project to pull off, but it, it's very rewarding to see it through its completion. It, this project would not have been possible without the help of those that stopped by our booths at the various fundraisers over the last year. We had a student from the Temple Emmanuel in Worcester do a fundraiser for us. There was a mom's club who contributed some money. Uh, Carol Mahoney at the Center of Hope made our banner and made these t-shirts. So if you see anyone wearing these t-shirts, they're the ones who got dirty. They're the ones who lifted trees and dug them. And um, thank you to all, every one of those people. Um, Stephanie DiMartina was very supportive of this effort. She was doing her Facebook and publicity stuff for us, and all the while she was doing her own thing. So, Stephanie, good job on your part. Um, a lot of people did help and volunteer. You know, we did this in Southbridge and Charlton on Saturday. The Charlton Lions Club helped planting in Charlton. Um, Councilor Clemens was there with her husband, and she worked really hard right to the end. Um, I don't agree with you all the time, but I respect your effort. Uh, other people, Jesse Stanhope and his neighborhood crew, uh, one of your cameramen over here, um, they brought a dump truck and they helped distribute trees. Um, we, these were supposed to be bare root trees, six to eight foot bare root trees, easy to move around, easy to plant. We got bare canvas root ball trees, spruce trees weighing about 250 pounds. So Jason Cantera came with his front end loader and when we were taking them off a truck that's about five feet high, you know, it, it saved a lot of people's backs and it, Jason, thank you. Um, on the town side, the South Beach DPW director slash tree warden slash probably a lot of other things, Tom Daly, uh, was very supportive. He did a mailing for us and he provided wood chips and he was in the background through correspondence between us and you know the DCR people and keeping the town manager informed as well. Um, the council you announced it for us. We got some volunteers. I appreciate that. On the state side, um, it was mentioned Peter, uh, Representative Peter Durant, um, he was involved with this from the beginning. Um, he did go door to door with me, showing homeowners the selection of trees that were available. He was one of the first ones there on Saturday. He approached that truck and started taking them off. He was covered in mud, and uh, he worked really hard. Him and his aide, uh, Joe McKenna, they stayed right to the very end. Um, thanks to the Kennedy Donovan Center, Robin Weber, for opening up her facility to us to house this operation. It was centrally located and made a great spot to come. You know, we had lunch for everyone. There was restrooms. It was just, it was just great for her to do that. Uh, the DCR, um, Eric Seaborn and Molly Feilicker, uh, their crews were all the heavy lifting and making this event possible. It was really great to work with them. Um, we do this again in Brimfield on Saturday at 8 o'clock. Like I said, just, we were Southbridge, Charlton, Brimfield, and we're helping Sturbridge. So if anyone wants to come to Brimfield Town Common at 8 o'clock, we would appreciate it. Um, we also passed out seedlings. Um, 77 trees were planted in town, 65 were planted in Charlton. There were 2,000 seedlings available. Um, for, for that, there are still some left, and they are at the DPW facility. All you have to do is go down there. There are dogwoods, there are maples, and white spruce. 
So please go down there, put them in the ground, make sure that they get planted, not wasted. Um, basically, a lot of people helped in this effort, and uh, if you go down 169, you can see a whole bunch of new trees. Yeah, it's a gateway to the town. Uh, we hope the homeowners enjoy them, and everyone passing by uh, enjoys these new trees for many years to come. Um, on behalf of Operation Tree Party, thanks to everyone who helped in replanting our roots. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Do we have any other citizens wishing to come forward? Good evening. I'm Ron Shinisky, 158 Clements Hill Road, and the president of the Downtown Partnership. Um, as you're all aware, a couple months back, uh, the council approved taking part in the Downtown Partnerships event in an attempt to bring jobs into the community. Uh, we have aptly named the event Discover Southbridge and the value of doing business in the heart of New England. Um, I'm before you tonight to give you an update as to where we sit, as well as an invitation to the event formally. Um, today we printed and stuffed and all of those things uh, the next day or so they're going to hit the mail uh, 2,500 invitations that are all going uh, about 2,500 I should say because some will be going uh, locally or to government officials but all the rest will be going to uh, real estate brokers uh, commercial realtors business brokers and developers who are inside the 495 belt in an attempt to get uh, them to come out here. Um, we have also uh, sent them about six or seven weeks ago a save the date card so that they were aware of the date and could, could uh, plan ahead for that. We have mailed uh, sponsor packets. I'll be giving you a, a sample of those tonight as well so you can see that, that we mailed to local uh, businesses uh, who could benefit from having more jobs come into the community but uh, who could help sponsor the event. And uh, I'm happy to say that our initial funding uh, requirements have been met. We are now working on additional funding uh, because the more advertising you get, the better opportunity you get to get uh, the brokers, the developers to come out. You don't know how many of them will take your piece and throw it in the circular file because they're just going to look at it as uh, another piece of junk mail and how many will take the time to read it and come out. Um, our goal out of the 2,500 is to get uh, five, uh, five percent would match our goal. If we get ten percent, uh, we'll be busting at the seams at the hotel and conference center uh, because we'll have uh, the local property owners, the government officials. Uh, we'll have four to five hundred people there if we get uh, ten percent of the people that we invite to come to the event. Um, so I'm going to give all of that to each of you. I also uh, just wanted to put a, a call out to each of you as well as the people at home um, we need a little bit of help. And the, the way that we need help is we need to get as many people to the event who are business brokers, commercial realtors, developers, uh, these types of folks uh, to the event because if you don't put the knowledge into the hands of the people who are selling um, what Southbridge has to offer, uh, the event is not as useful. Um, locally, a lot of us know what's going on, and a lot of us know what properties are available. The idea is to get the people outside of the area to know what's going on and what's available, and to, and, and to start bringing their clients into Southbridge. And so, who do you know? Uh, ask them to attend. Ask them to go to our website, discoversouthbridge.com, or to call me, or to email uh, us any of those things uh, so that we can talk to them further. Do you know people in TV, radio, or the, the newspapers, uh, or publications who would be interested in a, a story, a good story on how a community is coming together as a unit to bring business in and to do its part to revitalize its own itself? It's not asking uh, for federal help or any of those things. It's just people in the community working together. So who do you know and who can you invite in? And then finally, uh, on the website, as I said, it's discoversouthbridge.com. We have started uh, to post commercial properties that are available. 
and we, uh, we only had the, the information that people send to us. We sent a letter to every commercial property owner in town. Uh, we got a list from the town as to who gets the commercial uh, bills, and we mailed to every commercial property owner in town a, re a letter requesting that they send us information if their property is for sale or for lease. Send us pictures. Send us the details. Send us everything you know. If you don't have a commercial property, yet, but you have a property in a commercial zone that you're interested in perhaps selling, we're interested in that as well. We want to get as large of a multimedia presentation running on the site and at the event so that people are aware of what's going on. We, we just would like you to send us your information. There's no charge for any of that. It's free. This is something we're doing for the community. We ask that you just support us by sending us your information. And that's everything I have. I'd like to just hand these to you each, if I could. Again, Mr. Chinisky, what was the date? It's May 31st. May 31st. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So as the invitation says, it's May 31st. We're going to start tours in the afternoon. Um, we have said on the website that the tours will be led by yourselves <laughs> um, and uh, uh, other <clears throat> partnership members, that type of thing. But you're pretty much committed, uh, according to our website now. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're hopeful that uh, this is going to be a, a great event that's going to help bring jobs to Southbridge. And we thank you for your support. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any other citizens who wish to come forward? Hello, my name is Amelia Palaquin, and I live at 275 Marcy Street here in Southbridge, and I am pleased to be here tonight to announce my candidacy for Southbridge Town Council. I'm running because, like many people in town, I'd like to see some changes in the relationship between our community. Excuse um, me. Pardon? Are you, I, I can't hear you, but are you talking about a candidacy? Yes. We can't really do that at Citizens Forum, Miss. Is, is that a rule in the town council rules? Yes. It's, it, it's not a town council rule. It is a rule, though. I've We're not allowed to do that. We don't allow that, I'm afraid. We can't campaign at, at okay. Citizens Forum. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, instead of seeing me at Citizens Forum, please check out my website, electamelia.com, instead. Um, and you can see that in Spanish as well. Sorry, guys. Good luck. Thanks. Sorry. Mm. Okay. <coughs> Any other citizens wishing to come forward? Good evening, Town Council. Uh, excuse my appearance. I was doing some yard work earlier, and uh, I had to get, get here for the meeting. Uh, on Thursday, I attended a recycling information meeting. Um, I'm sorry to say I, I haven't seen it re-televised. Uh, it seemed to be recorded. Um, and I don't want to get into um, the whole meeting, the, whole informational meeting today, uh, the one thing that I did want to emphasize here on the record is that EHS would be following up this program with a meeting. Was I yeah, I, I didn't quite say that um, when, we, when we, the next meeting is, is just on some override infra, uh, school budgetary stuff at the new school. The following one, which we'll do a presentation with Barry, I'm working on getting all that we talked about at that meeting you know, into a form. So it may not be for another three meetings, which means it could be possibly... No, it's a couple of weeks. It's, okay. it's about two weeks. I'm out of town next week on business. I'm sorry, oh. Mr. Buxton. I, All right. I've, we've been uh, four meetings last week, and mm. so I'm sorry. The, the important thing is uh, um, some budget items were laid out about printing up material and stuff, and uh, there's still some question that is mm -hmm. in relationship to that material, and I hate to see printings go out that really... Uh, don't cover 
what the town is trying to achieve as far as the curbside program. Uh, I also, in, in reviewing the information, um, I'd like an opportunity to present to the EHS subcommittee uh, uh, a concept as far as a recycle reward program based on not just recycling, but mm -hmm. the, the whole curbside program. Uh, like I said, I won't go into detail, but it, it does involve the whole curbside program. It not only emphasizes uh, a reward for recycling, but should you, uh, by us reducing MSW, mm -hmm. by reducing um, yard waste, by it actually increases the value of our recycling. Um, I wish I had thought of it sooner. I've been, I've been eating over the idea of a re recycle reward program for the last three years, trying to come up with something. Uh, I was always stuck with the dilemma of, well, we know the recycled <coughs> materials are a valued commodity after, afterwards. Uh, in trying to look at how do we access that value and bring it back to the residents. This program has nothing to do with the aftermarket. That's all as far as the handlers go. The aftermarket is theirs. This is based solely on curbside pickup. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate your time and uh, like I said, I was unprepared for this meeting. Uh, one of the things that cable access used to have is the posting of dates for meetings. Uh, over the years, I've requested many things that never got approved, like posting meetings for all subcommittees uh, or televising more subcommittees. Um, but the one thing I would request is if we could achieve, at least notify people when the uh, town council meet, is, is meeting uh, in advance of their meetings, I'd appreciate it. We, uh, we, thank you. we actually do that at, at this council meeting. We give the date of the next meeting and I believe that the, the access channel does, does post that, but that would be something you'd have to take up with them. I have, this council has no purview over what the cable access channel does, I'm afraid. All right, I appreciate okay. your time. Okay. Just a couple of your comments, Excuse if me. I could. If I could you manage. wanna go through me? Yes, okay. sorry, manager. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Since he was addressing yeah. a number of things directly at me, I figured I'd respond to a couple mm -hmm. of your comments. I'd be happy to hear your proposal at the EHS meeting. We can put it on as an agenda item. I just don't want you to, this is misleading. There are things being done in the next few weeks that we, what I said would come out of that meeting, we would try to come up with some agenda items or, or act, actions that the subcommittee might want to take. So there are things being done that are under the purview of the town manager and mm -hmm. the departments, the Department of Health who put that presentation together not myself, um, the police department, who is in charge of the enforcement side of it, along with our, with Mr., uh, with our Green, uh, uh, Green Brown Engineering. Um, they're taking up a lot of those things that we talked about on Thursday and addressing a number of those concerns because that's what they do. And then we will continue the, continue the discussion. But I would love to hear a presentation on some other possibilities for this community. Uh, my, uh might it be suggested that if I can find available time with the town manager um, to present it to him and see if it's something that... Uh, I'm sure you can always make an appointment. If I'm, like I'm, to all, hear I'm always open to meeting. I mean, all just right. call the officer, come by, and we'll schedule something. Uh, I would like to ask one more question. During, uh, during the budget consideration, the, the, the budget amount on the Board of Health was uh, $720,000. I, I hate that. Uh, my only question is, does that include curbside? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. Yes, could, it does. Could, could I ask what the dollar amount on curbside is? 350,000. 350 for curbside? Correct. All right. I appreciate your information. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Do I have any other citizens that wish to come forward? I'm going to move on to agenda item number nine. Vote to transfer the sum of $17,000 from the Town Council Reserve Fund account number 1-132-5781 to Veterans Benefit Account number 1-945-5771-0-596 to cover expenses for the months of May and June 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 10. 
Vote to transfer the sum of $10,000 from the Town Council Reserve Account Number 1-132-5781 to the following accounts due to an increase in the costs associated in tax taking and foreclosures. 1-145-5300, Treasurer Collector, Specialized Services, $8,314.20. 1-145-5341, Treasurer Collector, Advertising, $1,685.80. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the town manager. Do we uh, appropriate any money on page two of the recap for this? Does the collector, treasurer, treasurer collector ever request any money? Um, a specific line on the recap sheet on where the you can request sheet? monies for the specific purpose in addition to the budget. Um, I know I utilize that in the community where I work. And I would just ask maybe if, if you, um, you would look at that. Um, these fees are going up, and that might be a way to, to uh, capture some additional monies for yeah. her to be able to do this. I, I will look in. That's a good question. Thank you. And just in terms of we do recover uh, the vast amount of this because this is added to the fees for the, um, the liens that go on these properties. So this is money that we will see back okay. at some point. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments on this? Can I have a roll call, please? Council Livingood? Yes. Councilor Mancucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Schott, North America, regarding public access to undeveloped property of Schott, North America fiber optics for public recreational purposes, including bicycle bicycling and hiking. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Regis. I apologize, Madam Chair. I, this was the one subcommittee meeting I didn't get to last week. Um, is, is, does this mean that we are taking on the liability? That's correct. Okay. And just to that point, um, there's two things. One is uh, we did send this uh, letter of agreement over to the town attorney. The town attorney has reviewed and approved it. Uh, there is a recreational statute that limits our liability. And then we also did send the material, and I did call the insurance company uh, to let them know that we were doing this. Uh, but in a recreational purpose, we have uh, limited liability for people that go onto this property and do it. One thing that was interesting in that statute is that you have to have no monetary exchange of value in order for that statute to, to play a role. So there is no dollar that's attached to this. Okay, thank you for that information. I apologize if, if that, you explained it in some committee and I wasn't there, I apologize, thank you. That's right, it's okay. It's okay, Councilor. Anybody else have anything? Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to ratify the agreement between and among the Town of Southbridge and the Charlton Housing Authority to supply potable water to property located in the Town of Charlton pursuant to Chapter 73 of the Special Acts of 1880 as amended. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 13. Vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Weston and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $38,000, and this comes from water retained earnings for the engineering design and permitting services in order to clean and line the main from reservoir number five to gatehouse number three and 1,900 feet of cleaning and lining in this portion of Eastford Road. So moved. Second. Madam Chair, just a, um, it, we should have had in there from where it says from uh, water retained earnings, we should have in there and appropriate from water retained earnings. It's actually in the one underneath it, but we didn't put it in that one. 
I see. It says where we're. It says okay. we're taking the money, okay. but they were appropriating the money. Okay. Motion to amend. I'll second that. Okay. So we're going to change this a little bit around. And the, um, the motion is to amend it to state, vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge, Weston, and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $38,000. And appropriate from water retained earnings. And appropriate from water retained earnings for the engineering design and permitting services in order to clean and line the main from reservoir number five to gatehouse number three and 1,900 feet of cleaning and lining in this portion of Eastford Road. Do I have, uh, why don't we, we have, we have a, a motion. So um, can I have a roll call on the amended? Councilor oh. Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes? Okay, thank you. Now the vote. Vote to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Weston and Sampson Engineering in the amount of $38,000. And appropriate. And appropriate from water retained earnings for the engineering design and permitting services in order to clean and line the main from reservoir number one, number five to gatehouse number three and 1,900 feet of cleaning and lining in this portion of Eastford Road. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 14. Vote to, for town council to authorize the appropriation of $65,000 and appropriate from sewer retain, no? We actually used appropriation at the Where? beginning of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, I did cover that. I'm sorry. Okay, that's all right. Sorry, I'll start again. Vote for town council to authorize the appropriation of $65,000 from sewer retained earnings for inflow and infiltration identification and to ratify the agreement between the town of Southbridge and Weston and Sampson Engineers Incorporated in the amount of $45,000 and Veolia Water North America in the amount of $20,000 for their portion of the work. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on this? I have a roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. 15, vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the light industry zone at the intersection of Pleasant, Walcott, and River Streets by rezoning property currently zoned to family residential to light industry as recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board. The property is located at 114 Pleasant Street, Assessor's Map 31, Lot 39. This is the first reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 16, vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the general business zone along Main Street near the intersection of Main and Marcy Streets by rezoning two properties currently zoned to family residential to general business. As recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board, the properties are 80 Marcy Street and the adjoining parking lot, Assessor's Map 35, Lots 108 and 109. So moved. Second. And this is the first reading. Do I have any discussion on that? Can we have a roll call, please? Councilor Langevin? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Livingood? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Agenda item number 17, Councilor's Forum. Why don't we go with um, Councilor uh, Livingood, also known as Grandpa. Congratulations. I have pictures. I'm glad to see that. <laughs> I'm too young for a grandfather. <laughs> I have nothing tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you. Councillor Spinelli, also a grandpa. Seven times over. <laughs> Um, I'd like to remind people that on Wednesday, April 26th, excuse me, Thursday, April 26th, I knew I was going to make a mistake, my wife will <coughs> Friday, April 27th at 7 p.m. at Wells Junior High School, the Wells Drama, Drama Club is putting on a musical <coughs> called Cinderella Musical. Uh, tickets are $5 for adults and it is a fundraiser. $2 for children and seniors. And since one of my grandchildren is in the play, in the drama, in the musical, he promised me that it would be a wonderful evening, and I believe him. <laughs> he always tells me the truth. Um, these kids have done a lot of work, and I hope the people of Southbridge can go out and um, show their support for these uh, young citizens of Southbridge. They really do a, an excellent job. That's all I have, thank you. So let me get this straight. Is it, it's April 27th, Friday? It's April 26th, Thursday, and Friday, April 27th, 7 p.m. at Wells Junior High School. Okay, thank you. Councillor Langevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just quickly, I do, uh, after tonight, uh, the presentations, I want to say kudos to the acting fire chief, DeFranzo, and the men and women of the Southwest Fire Department. And I mean, the whole town should be proud. And um, my, I, for myself, in 2002, when we did take a vote on it, I recalled uh, moving uh, the town of Southridge uh, life-saving support system a step closer, and uh, it's showing that it's paid off. And, so when any residents of the community say, oh, my taxes and stuff like that, I, I just want them all to remember your taxes are being well spent, and that's a perfect example. So when you want us to say reduce or, or keep it level fun, everything comes at a cost. So kudos to the men and women of the Southwest Fire Department. And I, too, want to thank Mike Murray, uh, and numerous people, uh, I didn't see it firsthand. It was trees popping up everywhere in the neighborhood. Um, I thank you for stepping forward. Uh, I thank uh, Jason Cantara was a big help. <laughs> mm. Saved a lot of backs there and the Council of Clements and numerous other people. So uh, thank you for volunteering your services and moving the community in the right direction. And that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council. Councilor Vandal. Um, I want to bring up. I want to bring up the railroad tracks again. I don't want to be a pest, but I want to get rid of them railroad tracks down in Sandersdale near the Golden Creek and the ones on, I believe it's Hook Street. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm all set this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. First, I want to thank um, Councillor Vandal, and my aging vehicle wishes to thank you too. Um, about the tracks down by uh, Golden Creek. I travel that stretch often because of where I live and where the grocery store is and Dunkin' Donuts. And um, uh, it really, it's awful. It's terrible. It's getting worse and worse. So thank you for keeping that in the forefront. Um, just uh, to the town manager, I guess, um, we have been discussing, going through the budget deliberations, we've been discussing changes to Schedule 5. And um, I just want to make sure that I have in my mind correctly the process. That will go before subcommittee, any changes to Schedule 5, before we see it on, on May 21st at our budget approval meeting. Yes? No? We can do that, sure. I, I, I would like know. to do I, that, I please. I don't know if I've... I'm trying to remember what I've done in the past. I honestly don't remember. We can do that. It, it would probably be at a, uh, we don't have it ready to go, so it would probably be at one of the May sessions, so we may have to have a special session of the, I think it would fall under general government. So we, if, I know just speaking myself as a counselor, I would, I would appreciate that because we have discussed some changes, and um, I, I'd like to look at them a little more. 
Okay, because one thing for sure, we had a meeting today on the uh, the call fire department and the revisions to it, and they have to be on Schedule 5. Mm -hmm. So we, we definitely are going to make changes to it, plus the 1%. Everything else would be just the 1% adjustment. Okay. I just like, I like the subcommittee uh, form better than up here. I don't, you know, we should be doing all of our vetting in subcommittee and uh, discussing our concerns before we get up here to actually take a vote. That's, okay. that's how I feel anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's it for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And I couldn't agree with you more on that as far as betting. Okay. Um, Councillor Clements. Thank you. I'm good this evening. Okay. Well, I don't know about that, but you know. Could we'll you talk at least? About it later. Okay. Could you um, share with us the discussion of the next meeting date? I could do that. That's agenda item 18. The next ne meeting will be Monday, May 7th, right here at Council Chambers at 7 p.m. Very good. Thank you. And agenda item number 19, 19 is vote to enter into executive session according to Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 23B to discuss strategy relating to litigation and to adjourn. Second. Can I have a roll call on that, please? Yes. 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 I think he'd say yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One abstained. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 